In this video, we're going to look at two-way tables. A two-way table is a convenient way of representing two different types of information. An example could be gender and hair colour. In the video, we're going to look at completing a two-way table and then we will answer a range of questions that we're likely to get with the two-way table. So, let's start off with question number one. We're told there are 100 people in an office. Some of the information is given below. We're asked to complete the table and answer the questions below. So what we can see here is a typical two-way table. We've got now the gender here and we've got whether the person is right-handed or left-handed here. We're given some values and all we do is use the information from the table and the question to complete the table. There's no particular starting point necessarily. I always go with the question and take out any information we can get. We're told there are 100 people in an office. That is the total. The total will go in the bottom right. So we can write that there are 100 people and that goes there. At this stage, it's entirely up to you which way you go about filling the table in. What I'm going to do is now find the value here. This is the total number of people. They're either male or they're female. So if 45 are male, the rest must be female. 100 minus 45 gives me 55. If I now look at this particular column, these are the left-handed people. I know that in total there are 21 left-handed people. 12 of those are female, so this number must be the number of left-handed males, which is 21 minus 12, which gives us 9. If I now want to fill out this particular column, we can work it out by looking at the rows going across. So we know that in total there are 45 men. We've got nine of them who are left-handed, therefore the remaining amount must be right-handed and that gives me 36. 45 minus nine is 36. If we look here, we've got females right-handed. Well, we know in total we've got 55 females, 12 of them are left-handed. That's going to leave me now 43 which are right-handed. This one here, I can either read across or I can read down. Whichever way I go, it must give me the same. 100 minus 21 is going to give me now the number of people who are right-handed. As 100 people in total, 21 are left-handed, therefore 79 will be right-handed. We can see that if we had added now the right-handed males and the right-handed females, we would have also got 79. At this stage, we must check that all of our rows and all of our columns add up. 36 plus 9 is 45. 43 plus 12 is 55. 79 plus 21 is 100. Now, if we go down, 36 and 43 is 79. 9 and 12 is 21. 45 and 55 is 100. So we filled that out. Before we go and answer the questions, I'm going to look at what each of these boxes or cells represents. So this one here is the males who were right-handed. If you're unsure, you simply read across and up. So if you've got a ruler, you don't have to do this if you're, not, if you're confident, you just read across and up. And these are at right angles. So male, right-handed, we've got 36. This box here, or cell, is now the left-handed males, and this one is the total number of males. If we look at this one here, this is the number of right-handed females, the number of left-handed females, and the total number of females. This is the number of right-handed people, so the total number of right-handed people, the total number of left-handed people, and the total number of people in the office. Okay, let's go ahead and answer the questions. We're asked to write down the number of men in the office. So, male and men, so we simply go to this value right here, 
and we can say now that there are 45 men in the office. In part B, it says one person is chosen at random. Find the probability it's a right-handed female. So with probability, we need this out of 100, as there are 100 people in the office. We now need to find the right-handed females. Well, right-handed females are just here, and there are 43. So the probability will be 43 out of 100, or if you like, 0 0.43. Part C, write down the fraction of men that are left-handed. Just be careful with this. The wording is slightly different to what we've just done. The fraction of men that are left-handed. So if we look, we've got 45 men and nine of those were left-handed. So we have nine out of 45. Take a couple of goes at reading a question if you're unsure and establish whether it's asking you to find it out of the total or out of the men or the women. So nine out of 45, we need to give this as a simplified fraction. We can divide both the numerator and the denominator by nine. So this is gonna give us one out of five. In part D, we need, uh, it says, which is the modal group of the four groups? Well, let's just establish which the four groups are. The four groups are going to be right-handed males, right-handed females, left-handed males, and left-handed females. So which is the modal group? Well, that's the one with most in. So it's going to be the right-handed females. And I'll just write R, H, F. Right-handed females, that is the modal group as they have the most in. So that's a basic two-way table. We've completed it and answered a range of questions using the information. So in the next one, we'll go through it slightly quicker and see how we get on. So in this one, it says some information is given about people's leisure activities below. Copy and complete the table and answer the questions below. Okay, so this time we're not given any number in the question. It's perfectly fine. We can go ahead and just fill out these values using what we have in the table. So we can see that we've got children and we've got these leisure, or we should say we've got the age group, children, adults, OAPs, and then we've got the leisure activities, tennis, gym, swimming. Okay, so if there are 30 people who play tennis, we've got 10 adults, we've got eight OAPs, we add these together, take it from 30, that gives me 12, and that's the number of children who play tennis. If we now look, we can work out some others. We could work out this one here. We could work out that one there. I'm gonna work out this one just here. We've got now OAPs eight play tennis. We've got now 17 go swimming and 50 in total. If I add the eight and the 17, that gives me 25. 25 from 50 gives me 25. At this stage, I can fill out this one or I can fill out this one. I'm going to fill out this one just here. We've got now the gym goers. So 69 people go to the gym in total, 25 are OPs, four are children, that's 29. So this number must be what's left over and that's 40. So 40 adults go to the gym. If we look down here, we can work this one out. So what we've got is the total, this will give us the total number of people who are in the survey. Uh, so 30, 69, that's 99 and then plus now this 67, that is going to give me 166. So I've got 166 in total. Uh, at this stage, we can go ahead now and fill this one out, or we can fill this one out, entirely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this one out. So here we got 12 and uh, four, which is gonna give me 16. 16 from 44 gives me 28. If we now look at this one, 28 and 17 gives 45, so that must be 22. And then if we look across, 22 and 40, 62, that gives me 72. And now we check that they all add up. So going down, that equals 30. Going downwards, that gives me a total of 69. Going downwards, that gives me a total of 67. And going downwards, now adding those up, that gives me 166. Checking across, that is 44, that does give me 72, 
that does give me 50 and this of course gives me 166. So as you can see there's no uh, particular way of doing it. Uh, but one thing that I couldn't do is, is do it if I had two missing parts here without working out others first. So let's go ahead and answer the questions. Which is the modal group of the nine groups? So again, the nine groups are just here. So which has the most in it? By the looks of it, it's adults who go to the gym. So adults who go to the gym, let's write this in. Adults, and I'd write it out in full, I'd just write adults who go to the gym. Um, part B, what fraction of the total children go to the gym? Right, so if we look now, what we've got here, children, we've got 44. What fraction of those go to the gym? Well, the answer is 4 out of 44. We can simplify this now by writing 1 over 11, by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 4. One person is chosen from random. Find the probability that the person chosen is an adult who swims. Adults who swim now 22. So we've got 22 out of a total of 166. If we look at D, one person is chosen from random. Find the probability that the person chosen is not an adult who swims. Of course, you can go ahead and uh, add up all of those, but all we would do is simply take this away. So what's that going to give me? 144 out of 166. That is all of the others uh, added up, or that one just taken away. The probability of something not happening is 1 minus the probability of it happening. Um, which is the least popular activity for adults? Well, we look across, we've got a choice of tennis at 10, gym at 40, swimming at 22. So we can say now that that is going to be tennis. Last question, write out a sample space and it says a list of outcomes for all of the possibilities from the table. Okay, so what we do then is simply write, we do, and we can write this as abbreviated uh, terms, CT, child tennis, CG, which is child gym, we've got now on here, uh, CS, which is child swimming, we can write now that we've got adult tennis, we've got adult gym, and we've got adult swimming. Uh, we can do OAP tennis, so OAP tennis, we can do OAP gym, and we can do OAP swimming. So that's a list now of the possible outcomes. Uh, so it might be a question you get asked, um, not massively common, but again, just testing another skill. Let's do one more. 40 boys and a number of girls were asked about whether they worked or went to school. The partly complete, uh, I think that should be completed two-way table shows some information below. Study the table below and answer the questions. Right, so what have we got? We've got boys and girls, has a full-time job, goes to school. 40 boys. Well, 40 boys, we need to put that just there. If there were 40 boys, there were going to be 10 girls, as we've got a total of 50. If 10 boys have a full-time job, 30 are going to go to school. Going to school, well, 30 and 8 is 38. If we look at 38 from 50, that gives us 12. And then we've got 10 from 12, which gives us 2. Or if you like, 8 from 10, which gives us 2. Um, so nice and straightforward. Again, I, I went through that relatively quickly. You didn't have to do it that method, um, either or. In part 8, how many girls were asked in the survey? Well, if we look, girls were 10. So we simply write 10. There were 10 girls asked in the survey. What percentage of the total number asked were boys who went to school? So if we look at the boys who went to school, 30 boys out of the 50 went to school. If we wrote this now, we need to write this as a percentage. If we wrote this as an equivalent fraction out of 100, remember percentage is out of 100, 60 out of 100, which gives 60%. In part C, what fraction of the total people surveyed were girls? Well, if we look now, the total number of girls, that's going to be 10 
out of 50, and if you wanted to simplify it, you could, when asked to, 1 out of 5. In part D, write the number of girls who had a full-time job as the decimal of the total people asked. Okay, girls who had a full-time job. So what we have then as a fraction is 2 out of 50, and we need to write this as a decimal. 2 out of 50 is the same as 1 out of 25, which is going to give us 0 0.04. Alternatively, you could have said, well, 2 out of 50 is going to be 4 out of 100, which again is 4 one-hundredths, or 0 0.04. In part E, one person is chosen at random. Write down the probability that the of the person being a boy who didn't go to school. So, boy who didn't go to school, um, we'll assume then that he had a full-time job, so... On that one, boy who didn't go to school, let's just assume that's 10 out of the total now of 50. And that is what we have, 10 out of 50. Um, I don't think that question is necessarily, um, it, well, it's not a good one because he might not have had a full-time job. He might have, uh, might have done nothing, might have watched uh, TV all day. Um, but there we go. So two-way tables, fill them out using the information and then answer the questions that you're given.